flight time and horizontal range. These are kind of paired together. What flight time means is, what is the total amount of time that the object is actually flying, is in the air, okay? So again, come back to your six equations of motion, which looks like it will be the most natural choice to solve for flight time. I'm here, right? This is the end point, right? So time zero, time whatever it happens to be, at that moment, just like I said up here, what's happening, right? Down here, the vertical displacement is zero. zero. I'm back on the ground, right? So yeah, so I'm going to say um, it hits the ground when y equals zero. I'm coming back to that, right? Because flight time is defined by how long I've been in the air and now I'm no longer in the air because y equals zero. I can go ahead, I can solve this equation. Minus 5t squared plus 15t equals zero. What would you like me to do? Okay, I can divide through by, I can divide through by negative five. That'd be nicer. Now what? I'm going to factorize. And I have two solutions to this. Why do I have two solutions? Because I began at, at time zero, I was on the ground. And that's what this equation was solving here, right? So therefore I can say, for the particular question I'm answering, I want when it hits the ground, that's the flight time, right? So I can say, but I want some positive time. I, I'm not interested in the, the actual start time. So therefore, it's after three seconds only. Okay, does that make sense? So that answers the question of flight time. By the way, you should be a little suspicious when you look at flight time versus when you get to the height of the motion, right? That should make you slightly suspicious. If I know the flight time, which is three seconds, how am I gonna use that to answer the second part of the question? Okay, so horizontal range is how far away that thing lands from me, right? It's done all its up down, I'm not interested in that anymore. I've, I've worked out how long it's gonna to take to get to the end. So I'm going to pop that into horizontal displacement here, right? Which is, that's just going to take me a line. Therefore, x is equal to 15 root 3 times 3 is 45 root 3. Okay? So you can see here, again, remember I said the equations are easy. It's working out which equations you need to use and what you need to let them be equal to. All right, last question we got here is, great. We know how high it went, we knew how long it took to get to, where it's going to get to in the end. This last question is, well, what's it doing when it arrives? Impact speed, okay? So just like before, we drew our starting thing over here, okay? We're going to draw another diagram, but this time we're going to draw the moment of impact, okay? So therefore, if I draw my box here, the moment of impact, I'm coming from the air and I'm hitting the ground, okay? So therefore, I'm not going to start from the bottom left corner here and then project upwards. Instead, I'm somewhere in the air and I'm flying downwards and I'm hitting the ground. <coughs> so impact speed and angle, how am I going to work these things out? On the diagram, what I'm working out is this. This is my impact speed. Where is impact angle on this diagram? It's, it's another angle of inclination, isn't it? Except it's just facing in the opposite direction, okay? Um, because we're measuring from the ground, you never worry about this angle here from the vertical. It's always this angle of inclination, okay? All right, this is the opposite of what we were doing before, right? I knew what the angle and speed were when I started, and then I worked out x dot and y dot. So how am I going to work out this now if I don't have, yeah? So use y dot. Okay, so if I know the time when I'm hitting, which I do, then I can work out y dot, and in the same way, I can also work out x dot. I need both of those, don't I? Okay? Yeah. Say it again. X dot is constant. Yes, very good, but I still need to know what it is. Okay, so I'm going to say at t equals 3, we might as well say because we can just state it, right? It's horizontal velocity is constant, so it's just going to be 15 root 3 y dot has been changing, right, all the way through. So when I put in time equals 3, here's my y dot equation here. This is minus... Sorry. 
Yeah. 30? Yeah. Minus 30 plus 15, which is minus 15. Yeah. So therefore, I've got this here. And of course, it has to be negative because at this instant in time, I am dropping. Right? I'm going in this direction. Okay. So now when I know what each of these numbers is, from there, I can work out my theta and I can work out my v. Now, interestingly, when you compare this diagram with that diagram, they're congruent to each other, aren't they? All the dimensions are the same, but what's different is I've been flipped over. Right? I've been reflected horizontally. I'm coming down rather than going up. Okay? But because everything's congruent, that means I know what this is. Right? You see that? I could use Pythagoras again, but we've already worked this thing out. Okay? So therefore, v equals 30. What about the angle? It's also congruent, right? So 30, 30 degrees is my angle of impact. So you can see there's this huge amount of symmetry. Remember I said, hey, that's suspicious, isn't it? Right? Your flight time is exactly double the time it takes to get to the vertex of motion, right? The height of its motion. And in the same way, the way you began, sorry, here it is. The way you began is how you ended if it's a perfectly symmetrical situation. If I fired from the ground and if I landed on the ground. Does that make sense? Now, let me just change the question slightly and leave this for you as something to have a go at. What if you were firing and you hit a platform? What if there was like a raised platform? Okay, uh, let's see. How high did we get? 11 to 20 meters. Suppose this platform was five meters tall. Okay, let me ask the question again. I'm not going to answer it here, but I'm going to let you try and work it out. What would I do to work out the impact speed and angle that are now different? They're going to be different, right? Something different is going on. How would you go about finding these two if I changed this thing about the final part of the question, right? I could ask all of these. I could ask what will be your new flight time and horizontal range if you're going to hit this five meter platform and what will be your impact speed and angle now that you're hitting this raised thing rather than coming back down to the ground, okay?